Welcome back to the next episode of the Ritchie Brothers Insight Series. And today we're going to focus on the components of an excavator undercarriage. And some of these components may be the same as what you would see on a track type dozier or a track type loader. So some of the undercarriage components we'll go over today, we may revisit on another episode. So we're going to kind of follow along with the checklist uses. Also kind of talking about the wear and what's key to look at when you're inspecting the undercarriage of an excavator. So first of all, on the checklist you'll see is the roller frame. So the roller frame consists of the whole entire car body part, the body of the machine, which all the rollers, the idlers, everything is connected to. Uh, not to be confused with the roller frame. Sometimes I have seen in checklists, inspector take a picture of the frame that the roller is attached to. That's not correct. I don't, that's not the correct photo to take for that line item. So the roller frame is this whole entire uh, structure here, which is holding the idler and all the undercarriage components. So the next thing we'll jump down to on the checklist uh, are the track tensioner. So understanding the track tensioner on the excavator is very important to our customers. Uh, the track tensioner is actually located in this hole, and this is where you would pump the track tensioner out. It's a grease jack that would pump the front idler out. But that's really not important to the customer or the buyer that's looking at this machine. He's really interested on how far this idler is pumped out past this roller frame. So you can see on this machine, the idler is uh, kind of far back behind the roller frame. So this means this undercarriage is not very warm because the jack is not pumped out very far. So this is a good photo to take to illustrate how much wear is on the undercarriage for your line item for the track tensioner. Uh, so we'll move on to the pads. Uh, this is the track pad. Uh, this is where you would measure your overall track pit pad width. It's from here to here. 90% uh, of your excav excavators will have a triple grouser pad. Uh, that's a choice on your checklist. Uh, you'll have uh, a single grouser or a double grouser pad, but 95 to, you know, most likely you'll have a uh, triple grouser pad on all excavators. Uh, one thing to look at is the trailing edge, the wear here on the trailing edge of the pad. That's a good indication of a high hour undercarriage and how much wear. And what that what causes that is this pin on the inside will get worn and this track pad will twist, causing these two pads to come in contact. That causes that wear. So that's one thing a buyer would really want to know how much wear is on these trailing edge. You could snap a photo here uh, to show how much wear is on this pad. And you would you know, take your track depth gauge and measure the height of the grouser. So we'll kind of cover two things right there at one time, the pad type and also the grouser height. Uh, now we'll move on to the idler while we're here. This is the front idler. Uh, and, and the thing about this, what we need to really focus on is the wear here across this edge. You will see this edge being worn uh, down toward the center of the center rib on a high hour machine. It's just really important to take a good photo, maybe snap from here, because you'll show how the track length actually comes in contact with the front idler, which is highly important to the customer. Uh, we'll back up a little bit. Uh, we'll kind of hit a couple right here. So now, uh, the links. Everybody, there's a common term. Have the pins and bushings been turned? Uh, you will not see the pins and bushings turned on the excavator a whole lot. That's something you don't see because these are non-lubricated rails. Uh, but it's also important to show this rail height. This really wears out and this boss will get a wear on it because it was, it's actually running deep into the rollers. And we'll hit on that in just a second. But just trying to show the customer one good link uh, showing the rail height and also this boss wear. And up under here, uh, we can get up under here, we can notice uh, the wear. So most likely you'll see the pins and bushings being busted or cracked because they've so worn because most guys, most operators, owners run the excavator until the undercarriage is just worn totally out. They'll get the most use they can out of one. Uh, so be sure to just get in here really close. You may have to take a screwdriver or something to dig the mud or, or debris away, uh, but make sure you look at those pins and bushings very closely. Take good photos. It, you know, in my opinion, I would like to back up right here. You can get in here and you get your iPad or your phone and you can take a good photo and you can probably capture three or four good uh, sections of the pins just from that angle. So while we're here, we'll talk about the uh, carrier roller. Uh, 
Depending on where you are, you may call them top roller, but in our checklist, we call them, we refer to these as carrier roller. Uh, so just look for the wear here. Uh, one thing that you really want to focus on is looking for flat spots. Because what will happen, this undercarriage could be packed with mud or snow or ice and freeze. And if it hasn't been cleaned correctly, you will, this roller will freeze and, and lock up and the operator will continue running it without letting it turn. So you may find a top roller that has a huge flat spot on it. So we really want to be on the lookout for that. Uh, look for flat spots. Some machines may have one, some machines may have two, and your large excavators may have three top rollers or carrier rollers, what we call, refer to them in the checklist. All right, backing on up to the sprocket segments. Uh, I call them sprocket segments. That's a, another term that we, uh, depending on where you are, but an excavator will have a sprocket ring. Uh, and this wear is what we want to show the customer. We want to show two things. We want to show this top wear here on the, out, on the top edge of the uh, sprocket itself, and this edge also. This, is, uh, this is, means it's running really deep if this is worn, and you'll see metal folded back. And this one is kind of starting that way, not a whole lot. But the sharper this point is, that's what the customer wants to see. That's where uh, he'll know that he'll have to replace that because this edge will be really worn. And if this edge is worn, that might be a key indicator. If you walk up to the machine and you notice this edge worn, yes, a key indicator. You might have a worn set of rails right off the bat. You may want to look at that. It might kind of like throw a red flag. Hey, now you might, and, hey, I'm going to look at my front idle and see how far it's pumped out. So just looking at this can tell you a lot of things about this undercarriage. Uh, so just take good photo of your sprockets. There's no need in like uh, getting in here trying to see this, how it mates together with the bushing or the pin. It doesn't matter, but just showing a good image of that sprocket, that's what the guy wants to know. And, and another thing that I've noticed in the past doing inspections, uh, some customers may replace this, and it may be brand new, uh, have very little hours of wear on it, and this be totally worn out. They're trying to get a little more wear out of this undercarriage. So don't let a brand new set of sprockets wear, fool you to think you have a good undercarriage. That's a good thing to look at because it could be mismatch, have a worn out set of rails and a brand new set of sprockets. And you'll see that on your dozers also. And the last component before we finish up on the undercarriage components are the track rollers that we refer to them in the uh, checklist. So there's uh, track rollers on the very bottom. Sometimes you'll have rock guards like this machine and you can't see too many of them. Uh, but the thing you want to look at is how much the flange is worn. Uh, that's a good indicator of how much wear is on the undercarriage uh, and how deep it's running on the bushings, like I mentioned up on the top. So this boss may be bumping the edge of this roller flange, uh, and you can just sit back and, and like what I would like to see and what customers and buyers want to see is you get right here and you take a good photo down through there and you can see, you know, a, a good number of your rollers. You can see how much your, wear, your rock guards are worn because when these start to get... The, your, your bottom rollers begin to get more and more worn. These rock guards will actually try to get bump the pad, and you'll see wear here. Another good indication of a, a undercarriage that has a lot of wear. But you know, take good photos of the track rollers, and that kind of winds up all the components of this undercarriage. Uh, like I say, and you might not catch uh, all your wear from one angle, so just be on the lookout. And you can see down the top of your. Uh, roller frame or your track pads and you can see how if it's worn be on the lookout for that also uh, but this is kind of sums up here what we have in undercarriage